I've got a new design that I finally figured out today. And this is it. I don't know if you can see how uh, close it is. Yeah, let me get my little cutaway one to show you the difference in how long it is. You see the switch body here? And then look how short this is. And that little stopper at the bottom there represents, you know, where the where the PCB would be, or the equivalent. That's why it's kind of angled. Um, so this is the old design, and it, this one feels fantastic, and it's just, it's generally great, but it's, it's a little long. And you can tell if I compare it to like a cherry switch. Well, this is a kale switch, but it's the same as the cherry design. You can see here, let me get two hands. You know, the overall body of the cherry is, is a little bit longer, just a smidge. But it actually, the cherry sits up top right here, so that's really the what it's like, right? So from a build plate standpoint, this one goes down uh, a lot further than the cherry does. But I mean, it works on a completely different principle, so maybe not that big a deal. But let's compare it to the new design. Let's move this one out of the way. Now you can see they're about the, they're about the same. See that? Now this one right now, I'm just gluing it in there. That's actually just clear silicone. And the reason why I used silicone was so that I could make it silent like that, but it still feels pretty good. This is about, uh, I measured a, uh, a little while ago, it was about 45 grams of force. And it's, it's, it makes almost no noise. It's really, really quiet. I really like the, uh, the silicone. But I must admit, the silicone doesn't feel as nice as just having the magnets smack into each other. I guess it's like the um, the difference between like a clicky and a, and a, a linear. Though <clears throat> this one is very tactile. Um, the silicone is, it's, I'm slamming into the silicone and it's really soft. <laughs> so it's got a soft bottom that I think is just a smidge too soft in my opinion. But that might just be because I glooped it up a little too much. You can see that. <laughs> so the, the key cap is is hitting the the silicone and that's what's going on and then this cutaway is oh and then another issue is the magnets like the the switches like to pull each other back pull each other together because <laughs> they're magnetic based uh but you, this, this one's probably the most satisfying of all of them it's uh, got a soft bottom but when it comes back up it's got a click but that click can be annoying and it's annoying my family <laughs> as i click it all day um, but it feels fantastic. This is the best feeling fish, uh, one of all of them. But now I've got like I've got like two designs. I've got like a low profile that's only semi low profile. This is actually three and a half mil millimeters of um, travel. But if I compare it to a kale chalk, which I think is like three point two millimeters of travel, I bet if I reduced the travel on this by about, you know, if I reduced it to like 2.6 millimeters, it would probably be about the same size as this because the, um, you know, whatever the distance is here is just going to get cut off. That's the only difference. So if I cut off like a millimeter and a half here, that's about, it'll be just a little bit longer than the kale chalk, but it'd be a pretty effective low profile switch. And I don't know how the community would react to having a magnet sticking up you know, you move the keycap, and there's your magnet. <laughs> so I can design a switch body that the magnet is more um, uh, seated into with, without having to use glue. And that's probably the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to – I used, I mean, way back in the day, I used to have a two-part switch body. And that's probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a lower part and a top part that just snaps on that covers the magnet. But having the magnet angled like this uh, sideways – also should let more light shine through. You know, if there's a light underneath here, you can see that um, only just this, you'll just get a little bit of shade in the corner here. But overall, I'm, I'm very satisfied with how this feels. I should probably make one with CA glue just to compare. The only annoying thing about CA glue is you can't um, pull it off after, <laughs> like it's permanent. You have to dip it in some acetone, get the CA glue off. Whereas with the silicone, I can just scrape it off with my fingernail and then use the magnet somewhere else. But isn't that nice and quiet? And I haven't lubricated this one. But uh, PET 
has a very, very low friction coefficient all on its own, especially rubbing against itself. And another thing is that this is a three by one and a half millimeter magnet, and I just ordered some three by two millimeter magnets, 300 of them to be precise, and we'll see how much that Im impacts the um, strength, you know, the force curve. I bet, it, I bet it'll make it probably go to like 62. That'd be my best guess. Um, and then I don't have to worry about making the um, little magnet shroud as thin, because that's why that's that's the benefit of this method is the magnet. If I didn't have that silicone there, the magnet right there would touch the underside of this one. But you don't want magnets, you know, directly smacking into each other because it'll, fall, you know, break apart over time. You know, every smack wears away a little bit more of the magnet. You need something protecting the magnets so that they don't do that. But ultimately, that's actually the strongest way to get it is just to have magnet to magnet touching. Then they have the strongest force to pull away from each other. Anyways... That's what I'm currently working on, and it seems to work pretty well. Nice and quiet, feels good, very tactile. 